Hello and welcome to Chandu.org. I don't really know what to call this, so I'm just going to call it an interactive chart slider thingy. Imagine you have a bunch of charts and you want to showcase all of them. Now, obviously, you will come into a real estate question, right? You have limited space and you have seven, eight or maybe nine different charts to showcase. Interactive charts are a great way to compress the amount of information and show one at a time or some at a time, depending on what the user wants. But they tend to look quite meh. So I came up with this uh, idea inspiring from a, um, you know, vi music video browsing things that you normally see on old style iPods or even uh, some of the music players. It's like essentially each chart is like one disc and you can slide them, slide through them to see the other charts. So hence the name interactive chart slider thingy. Uh, I, in this video, I'm going to showcase the chart and explain how you can construct a similar chart. If you are in a hurry, you can also download the template and just change the basic things so that you can make a similar output for your work. But I'm hoping that you take this idea and get inspired and maybe make something even cooler or interesting for your line of work. So on to it now. So here is a demo of our interactive chart slider thingy. And um, let's just first look at it and then we will go and understand how this all came together. So you have one chart, but there are six others that are shown in the background. Uh, so kind of like what's coming next. And you can use the slider at the bottom to really scroll through the item. So as you select a new chart, depending on which way you're scrolling, the other charts will go in that direction. So we're now looking at profit, customers, etc. And as you select the chart, it will also show a clear uh, title or caption right on the top along with the chart title there. I've kept it uh, very, very simple, but uh, this idea is very powerful and you can extend it to showcase different types of charts. So we have uh, some data here. Uh, let's imagine, you know, monthly figures for sales, expenditures, profit, customers, uh, and some other KPIs like ARPU or SRPU. I don't really care what they mean. It's just some numbers and uh, something else like exit rate, right? Now, what you want to do at, as a start is we will make the charts for all of these as if we need to make them. So we will make all the seven charts and place them one per cell. So that's the key part. Uh, it's not necessary that they should be in one cell, but that if having them in one cell makes our job really simple. So this chart, sales chart, kind of really fits into that cell B2. If you look at the cell boundary B2 and the chart boundary for that, they are nearly same. So you make one chart and, and put it in one cell and continue this process. You can format these charts in any which way. So for example, one of them could be a line chart, one of them could be a column chart, another could be a bar chart or whatever. It, it doesn't really matter, but they need to have uh, in one cell and they need to be all uniformly sized. Once this is all done, then what we need to do is, let's just say there are seven charts. This technique will work for any number of charts, but uh, you know, when we are making the output, let's just say you have 200 charts, you know, unlikely, but imagine you have 200 or 25, uh, then you want to just show seven at a time and uh, there will be more to come here on, on that side or that side. But as you scroll through, you can pick the seven that you want to show and, and, uh, and render them here. That's the idea. Right. So we will have seven charts, uh, but if you have more, then you will have all the charts that continue like that in the range. And once that is done, we want to um, make sure identify the range that is these charts are sitting. So the charts are sitting from B2 onwards B8. Right. That's the last cell. Um, I might actually zoom this down so you can see that. Okay. One thing that I've done after creating the charts and placing them in the cells is uh, I've selected the range where the charts are sitting and I've given that a name called charts. Okay. This step is entirely optional, but having that a name will, will help you write formulas better. Okay. So once this step is done, we make the charts, we place them in cells and we give that range a name called charts. So that is the, uh, steps that are required to making the charts. Then we need to also perform some calculations, 
okay uh, we we will be using a couple of different things here one is a sliding uh, scroll bar this will be useful for selecting the chart so essentially slide through mechanism um, and uh, this kind of a slider is easy to create all you have to do is go to developer toolbar uh, this is not something that you need to enable this is all part of core excel so everybody can use it and insert um, i can't really insert anything here because this worksheet is protected um, i'll just unprotect this and uh, you want to insert a scroll bar form control so that's the form control scroll bar now if you are one of those people that don't even see the developer ribbon uh, then you need to enable it uh, as i said this is part of excel just stays in the background uh, for most uh, by default but you can go to file options um, and then customize the ribbon and enable the developer toolbar all right so you want to have developer toolbar and insert a scroll bar I'll show you how that uh, will look like here we'll just uh, insert a scroll bar and then just draw one this will create a scroll bar the default will be it will go from 0 to 100 right what we will do is because in our case we only have seven charts we can just go to format control uh, and then uh, say minimum will be one and maximum is seven and the cell link is the critical part so what cell link does is it whatever the scroll bar value is that cell will show me that value so i link it to a cell like this so we can see right now we are at one you observe that cell there it changes to two three four five six seven right so this is the basic working of the scroll bar the scroll bar will help us get the user input and the input goes and sits in the cell so if i can write my formulas that connect to that cell then our job is done uh, I'll delete uh, this scroll bar. We already have a scroll bar. So I've linked the scroll bar to uh, this cell right here. Right now we are at five. We need to perform some simple calculations to know what is the neighbor for any given chart. So if you observe here, uh, if we are at ARPU, maybe it's easier if we go all the way first. So we are at the sales chart. The next three charts would be expenses, profit and customers. As you could see from data so if we are at sales the next three on the right side would be these three what about the left side the left side needs to have exit rate srpu arpu so that means they need to be in the reverse of this order uh, it might look very complicated but this calculation is very very simple we can use uh, some sort of if formulas and mod formulas to calculate the neighbors from any given position so if i selecting one then on the left hand side immediate left will be seven then six then five on the immediate right is two three four and if this number changes those numbers recalculate okay so this is uh, basically all the ch seven charts these are my neighbors and that's the central chart okay we can also calculate the kind of dynamic title to show by using simpler formulas again uh, you know calculate what is the first month value last month value percentage change whatever you can also type the title here and link it up um, to the cells i'm not explaining those formulas because they tend to be fairly simple and you can examine the download workbook for that so now we have uh, all the charts that are needed and all the calculations that are done we still need to make another seven more named ranges okay uh, so these are um, one for each chart the way this works is if i pick one i want to have my one of the names pointing to the very first chart because i picked one and then i want to have six more names three for my right hand neighbors and three for my left hand neighbors okay so we need to create those names it is um, slightly tricky but again not impossible all we have to do is select those names i've already set them up mid chart is my index of charts data m6 so data m6 is my um, that cell there uh, that is m6 so pick that chart out of all the charts i'll just not save that um, and then left word left one will be charts m8 m8 is this cell here right like that we identify all the charts so right would be n8 which is that cell right so we we get all the seven charts all right this is all done now let's go and make the visual uh, we already have something here so i'm going to just show you how to do this thing here 
Um, so what we will do is we'll start by um, selecting B2 alone, copy, control C. So after you copied, you come here, right click and then paste special linked picture. This is important. You want to have a picture that is linked to the cell B2 in the other worksheet. So now you get a picture. This looks exactly like the chart, but it is actually a picture that refers to cell B2. Whatever B2 contains that will show up here. For example, if I change this to B3, I will get the B3 chart. Okay. So instead of B2 or B3, we have already created a name, right? Mid chart. So we point to that. It will give me the chart that is in the middle. And if I change my scroll bar, I will see a different chart here, right? So this is actually a dynamic picture uh, that points to a chart on the fly. This is where that index formula is helping us because what index formula is doing is it is saying, oh, you selected two there. Let me go and get the second cell out of B2 to B8 and give it to you. So this is how that particular chart comes up. So once this is done, this is our middle chart. We want to kind of bring it in the forefront. So there are some visual trickery that I have done. One is uh, I kind of went and cropped to the shape to a rounded rectangle. Uh, this will give me a little rounded border. I'll just uh, make it like that. And then uh, from the picture format, I will I just set up a border around it. And then picture effects, shadow, some sort of a shadow like that. You can go and customize these things. For example, what I've normally done uh, in, in the above thing is rather than leaving the default shadow, I've increased the blur amount so that the shadow is more dull, but it is kind of bigger shadow and uh, reduce it this and increase it the transparency as well so that it is really dark prominent shadow okay so now this expenses chart is kind of coming into the foreground let's place the other ones in the background so we take this control c control v copy this place it somewhere here first step is we will change this to because it is going on the right side we will call it as right one that's the name so this will give me the right hand side chart the next thing is we want to actually have it tilted. So it, it needs to have 3D rotation as well. So once this is, uh, because this is a picture, you can do all of those things to it. You can press control one to format uh, and then using the um, 3D rotation options, uh, you can pick one of the 3D rotation things. So I will pick this one so that it, it rotates this way. Okay, so once this is done, right click and then send to back so that it goes in the back. We'll also reduce the size of it so that it is sitting in the back uh, with, uh, with that kind of a size. So it's not very, very prominent. Uh, another thing that I've done is I don't want this chart to be in the same prominent white color like the center one. So I've selected this, went to picture format, corrections, and adjusted the brightness down to negative 20%. So it is slightly dull. You can also, uh, you know, it's changed the amount of shadow that is given to it by making the shadow more transparent um, or even altogether taking on the shadow. Another thing that I've done is uh, with this kind of a disc uh, sliding thingy display, it's, it's always, uh, they, they always have a reflection going on so that it feels like they're all floating. So you can add a reflection effect as well, mm, just a little bit. Uh, and, um, you know, I'll make the size um, move like, transparent like that so that it is there, but it's not there. So you could see the reflection barely uh, and we will need to add that reflection effect to those things as well. So once you have um, kind of narrowed down what needs to happen and you do it for one, you just want to repeat that process for the other six charts and then you will get this kind of a thing. Um, and um, and yeah, there you go. This is how that particular thing is done. What about the title? The title is actually just a text box. So I placed a text box there and then just linked it to um, the, the that particular cell with, with the title. You can also use a cell and just merge the cells and put it there. Uh, but a text box will give you more options to add uh, any other special effects like shadows or you know reflection effects if you prefer to do that. So that's it. That's all. Uh, you you add the other charts, resize them, and uh, and, and position them behind each other, 
and you will get a nice little um, interactive chart slider thingy. Uh, I hope you found this particular technique uh, interesting and uh, useful. Um, you know, it, it can enhance the reporting that you are doing uh, and, you know, it can add a little bit of wow factor to some of the work that you are producing. Feel free to improvise this idea and add more things to it if you if you want. And uh, please, uh, if you are building something really cool or interesting, uh, share that in the comment section so that I can also learn from you. Thanks. Bye-bye.